Horses at the top of the sport come in a wide array of colors. We see them over jump, in the dressage square, and while the color of their coat is not the most important thing, some colors definitely seem to enhance the overall impression. But there is one color we almost never see in warm bloods and sport horses. This one. What is that color? Why is it so rare in warm bloods? And how do you get one? To answer this question, I went down a fantastic story of genetic, a little bit of history, and a few secrets that I've been hiding in plain sight. Taking a closer look at that very special looking horse that we see here, the hair color of the body seems to be a dark chocolate color, and the permanent hair, the mane, tail, whiskers, and eyelashes, if you could see them, are seemingly washed out to a rusty or blonde, and in this case, all the way to gray or white. This color has been known by many names over the years and over the areas, different regions in the world, and depending on the breed also. It's been called anything from chocolate, taffy, prateado, moro ruano, silver, silver dap. It has also been lumped in or confused with other colors such as liver chestnut with flaxen mane and tail, such as we see here in the Black Forest Draft Horse, or even Sudi Palomino in this Andalusian. But we know now, thanks to genetic, that this stunning color is actually the result of the interaction of only two genes. To understand how all this works, we need to remember a few basic facts. Horses make two pigments, eumelamine and pheomelanine. One produces the dark pigment or black, while the other one produces a reddish pigment. So fundamentally speaking, horses are either black or red or a combination of the two. Every other color or coat pattern we can see in horses is due to a modification or a dilution of those two pigments. Our stunning horse here is in fact a black horse, but he also has the silver dilution gene. It's a gene that reduces the expression and distribution of the pigment, in this case, the black pigment. And this is where the magic happens. On a solid black horse, the silver gene washes out the body out to this chocolate or pewter color while turning the mane and tail to a flaxen, rusty, or even white color. On a bay horse, like this one here, which has a red body but a black mane, tail, and legs, the gene pretty much ignores the red body but transforms the black points, making the legs a silvery brown color, streaking the mane and tail with white or pale yellow hair. The silver gene is what we call autosomal dominant. If present, it will always be expressed. Unlike the cream gene that dilutes the red pigment into palomino or cremello, depending on how many copies of the gene the animal has, the silver gene is different. You only need one copy of the gene to get that striking color. But keep in mind that although it is a dominant trait, because it only dilutes the black pigment, on a chestnut horse, there's no evidence that the gene is even there, since there is no black to dilute. So that means that a chestnut horse can be a silent carrier of the silver gene. The genetic location of the mutation that causes this striking color was hinted at in a 1999 study done in Rocky Mountain horses. And it was narrowed down to be on chromosome 6, but in 2006 it was finally isolated and named the PMEL17 mutation and given the label Z or Z. So now that we understand how it operates, let's take a look at where we can find that color. Archaeologists have been digging up horses' remains all over Northern Europe and into Western Asia, where it is believed that the domestication of the horse started. In testing the genetic makeup of those remains, archaeologists are finding evidence that the silver gene has been around for a very long time. It was already present in Iron Age horses in Sweden. So these striking looking horses are not a modern fad. They have deep root in ancient Northern Europe for sure. It's actually quite interesting to learn and to see what the horse color testing can tell us about ancient horses. The earliest color pattern to come out of the wild, so to speak, was the Sabino colored, identified in horses as old as 7,000 years ago. And then came the Tobiano pattern that showed up in horse remains dated from 5,500 to 5,000 years ago. And finally, by 4,800 to 4,600 years ago, we see the apparition of the dilute gene, the cream and the si silver dilution genes. Some researchers even use this as evidence for domestication and selective breeding in order to explain how these colors appear as frequently as they do in the horses that are found in archaeological sites. So while we 
know, of course, that the horses in the Americas all came from Europe originally, it's fascinating to see how much more prevalent the silver gene has become in the United States. The selective breeding of horses of that striking color has increased its prevalence. So while in Europe we find the silver gene most commonly in gypsy cobs, Icelandic horses and the Comtois breed in France, and also in some lines of Lusitano that have been bred in Germany, in North America we have a whole collection of breed that have that gene. The Rocky Mountain Horse, the Missouri Foxtrotter, the Morgan, the American Shetland Pony, the American Miniature Horse, as well as the Quarter Horse, and even some line of Welsh ponies all carry the gene, and maybe they all actually come from a few ancestors that would have been brought over from Europe. Now that we know what causes the color and even have a genetic test for it, it becomes relatively easy to breed a silver color horse on purpose. All you need is one parent to contribute the black gene and one to contribute the silver gene. So ideally one parent should be homozygous for black to make sure that the gene has a pigment to dilute and the other parent can bring in the silver gene. So for example you can imagine a Frisian, since they are usually homozygous black, crossed with a silver morgan to get a Frisian, but with a dark body and a white mane and tail. But just like there are many shades of bays and chestnuts, there are also various shades of what this dilution can look like. Some will be chocolate colored with a lightly flaxen mane and tail, while others will be almost pewter gray, some of them with spectacular dapple and a snow white mane, and some of them will change over time. For a long time people thought that warm blood simply did not have the silver gene. So in North America, and in Europe, a lot of breeders crossed warm blood and other sport horses to silver Morgan, silver Rocky Mountain horses, or even silver carrion quarter horses in order to get that elusive and rare silver black sport horse. But it always came at the expense of two things, full warm blood papers and athleticism. You see, you can't register your half Oldenburg, half Rocky Mountain horse with any warm blood registry. The warm blood registries are pretty strict about what breeds they now allow in their stud book, and generally they only allow full warm bloods from other registries and thoroughbreds. And that's pretty much it. Secondly, all of the breed I mentioned that carry the silver gene commonly have been selectively bred for trade like pleasure riding and endurance not for high performance Olympic disciplines like the warm bloods, with the exception perhaps of the few Lusitano and Andalusian that might carry that gene. Also many of those breeds are gated or pony size. So when you introduce the silver gene by crossing with those breeds, you're not just adding color, you're also diluting the performance quality and introducing unpredictable outcomes in both conformation and athleticism. But then, so how do we get this? This is clearly a very interestingly colored horse with a pale chocolate body, a sable tail, and not quite black legs. He is in fact a bay silver, or a silver bay. And this is no slouch. Calcourt Falkland competes at the highest level of the sport, meter 60, and is a full warm blood. So how do we end up with a full warm blood with the silver gene then? Well, the reality is that as I mentioned at the start, silver is the rarest color for warm bloods, but it does exist. It is present in a line of Dutch warm bloods. It is believed to originally have come from some Groningen and Gelderlander stock. Those are two old breeds of heavy cart type horses that were the foundation of the Dutch warm blood of today. It's those few stallions and mare presumably that were used in the early day of the Dutch warm blood creation that carried the silver gene into the mix. Hidden for many generations, and chestnut horses with an occasional crop up of a silver bay here and there, the gene made its way down the generation. Very few picture remain of those horses back then, but we can see a few here that are thought to be the origin of the silver gene and some of their descendants that as chestnut would hide that gene. But because no one was specifically breeding for that color over time, some of those lines simply disappeared. But today, we understand the mystery of the silver gene, and so a few breeders have been looking for those very specific bloodline and breeding to them to bring the silver gene back to the surface. The most represented line today to have this color is the one that comes from the mare line of Hind, a chestnut mare that can be traced all the way back to Euron, which we think is the original, or at least the first documented uh, silver gene carrying horse. She carries a silver gene and has 
passed on that silver gene to some of her descendants, a few of them we can see here. So we have a full warm blood that carries and express the silver gene on their coats. So if you want a silver colored warm blood, these are the bloodline you must look for. If you have a black bay mare, either a black mare or a bay mare, you could consider breeding to some of those silver carrying stallions. One word of caution, however, at this point. The silver gene has been mapped in close association with an incomplete dominant gene that causes problem in the structure of the eye. Because it is in complete dominant, it means that not every horse that has the gene will have the issue. And that seems to be the case. Many silver horses don't have an issue, but there is no denying the genetic association. The more inbred for color the horse is, the more likely they are to have eye problem related to this mutation. It is therefore found mostly in horses that were bred over generation in order to amplify that particular color. The Rocky Mountain horse, for example, or the Contois. Especially those that are homozygous for the silver gene have a higher chance of developing problem. Perhaps for that very reason, the fact that it hasn't been bred specifically for that color, it hasn't yet been identified as an issue in the Dutch warm blood population. We don't know if it's because it's a slightly different mutation coming from a different route, or if it's because it just hasn't shown up yet. No studies have been done specifically in the Dutch warm blood for this issue. The owners and the breeders of the silver warm blood that I've talked to have indicated that they haven't seen any sign of it, that their horses do not show any issue with their eyes. But of course, the sample is still very small. Horses and equine science is really the focus of this channel. So if this video helped you demystify and learn something about the genetic of the silver horse, like it did for me, please consider liking the video. And for more equine science deep dive, consider this video here. And generally, for more on the science of horses and warm blood breeding, subscribe, turn on the notification so you don't miss our next investigation or deep dive. And thank you so much for watching until the end, and I will see you on the next one.